Hi, I'm Jae Ha, founder of Scientific Analog. In this video, I'd like to provide a quick overview on the X model primitives while modeling a phase lock loop. A phase lock loop, in short PLL, is basically a feedback loop consisting of a phase frequency detector, charge pump loop filter, voltage controlled oscillator, and a frequency divider. It can serve as a good example for showcasing what kinds of X model primitives are available and how one can easily compose system variable models with them using Glister. To follow my demo, first copy the X model PLL tutorial directory included in your X model installation to your local directory and launch Cadence Virtuoso after sourcing the setup file. For more information on how to get started, please refer to the README file included in the tutorial. Glister provides the Xmodel primitives as schematic symbols and you can browse them from the library name Xmodel underscore prims. The primitives can be classified into seven different categories, circuits, connects, domain translations, function, logic gates, probes, and stimuli. And each primitive cell has a doc view, which you can double click to open the online documentation. Let's open the schematic cell view named PFD under the library name CP underscore PLL. It models the first component of our PLL, the phase frequency detector. A PFD measures the phase and frequency errors between two periodic input clocks, and it is typically implemented with two edge trigger flip-flops and a reset circuit. And it can be modeled similarly using the logic gate primitives of X model, such as DFF underscore X bit and N underscore X bit primitives. These logic gate primitives can perform logical operation on the X bit type digital signals in X model. The X bit data type in X model is for modeling binary signals whose timing must be accurate, such as clocks and pulses. For PFD, we certainly need high timing accuracy. Let's compose a test bench that can perform a simple simulation on this PFD model. Open a schematic name TB underscore PFD. One way to simulate a PFD is to apply two input clocks with a small frequency difference. We can generate these clocks using pulse gen primitives, which is the X model primitive in the stimuli category. To record the simulated waveforms, simply place this dump primitive on the test bench schematic, which is one of the probe primitives. Now, to launch the X model simulation from Glister, open the test bench editor and choose the simulator and simulation time and press this play button. Once the simulation is completed, you can click on this wave icon to open the X-Wave waveform viewer and browse the simulated waveform. You can see that the up and down pulses of the PFD are generated correctly as the timing between the two input clocks changes. The second component of the PLL is the charge pump loop filter. Let's open a schematic named CP underscore filter. A charge pump loop filter adjusts the phase and frequency of the VCO through its output voltage based on the timing error measured by the PFD. It is typically implemented with a set of up and down current sources that dump charge into an RC filter when the up and down signals from the PFD are asserted. The most intuitive way to model this circuit is to use the circuit primitives of X model, such as I source, register, and capacitor primitives. This transition primitive is one of the function primitives of X model, which translates a digital input to an analog output, in this case, the current level of the I source primitive. It may be surprising to you that X model supports circuit level modeling in System Verilog. That is, you can express arbitrary analog circuits in System Verilog directly as a structural combination 
of the circuit primitives. This is the easiest way to model various analog circuit effects, including loading, switching, and nonlinear effects. The next PLO component to discuss is the voltage controlled oscillator. A VCO produces a clock whose frequency varies with the input voltage. One way to model a VCO is shown in this VCO schematic cell. It uses a PWL function primitive that computes the frequency corresponding to the input voltage and a frequency to clock primitive that generates an X-bit type output clock with that frequency. This frequency to clock primitives is one of the variable domain translator primitives available in X model which can convert between a periodic clock and its properties, such as frequency, phase, period, delay, and duty cycle. They are useful when modeling various time domain circuits, including oscillators, delay lines, pulse width modulators, and duty cycle adjusters. Let's simulate this VCO with a sinusoid input voltage. This time, I'd like to use the Glister ADE integration to set up the simulation. Launch the ADE and select X model as the simulator. To set up the stimuli for the RVCO, select Setup Stimuli pull-down menu and define a sign function for the VCO input port. Then enable the analysis name X model with the desired simulation settings. and start the simulation. Once the simulation is over, you can view the waveforms by selecting the Results X-Wave menu. The last component of the PLL is the frequency divider. As the name suggests, it divides the frequency of the input clock. A frequency divider is basically a digital counter and is often made programmable. For that reason, many frequency dividers are described in Verilog RTL codes that can be synthesized for implementation. Glister can import X model or system Verilog source files into the Cadence Virtual Soul Design database. For instance, from the Command Interpreter window, you can select File, Import, and X model to import a source file into the desired library. Glister can also work with other Verilog views supported by Cadence. Now, all the component models are ready, and we can now complete the PLL model. The PLL schematic connects the PFD, CP filter, VCO, and frequency divider instances in a feedback loop. One noteworthy feature of Glister is that it can automatically detect types of each signal and insert connectors when two different type ports are being connected. In other words, Glista performs automatic type detection and type coercion during the netlisting phase. This is useful since system Verilog simulators do not fully support this feature yet. When you netlist the PLL model schematic, you can notice that an X bit to bit connect primitive is inserted between the signal FB and clock input of the DSM Verilog module because one has an X bit type while the other has a wire. X model provides various connect primitives to support conversion between different data types such as X real, real, X bit, and bit. Now, let's see if this PLL model can acquire a correct lock. The provided test bench view TB underscore locking feeds a 30 MHz reference clock to the PLL, and the PLL is initialized at a frequency far away from the desired locking point. When you run the simulation, you can find that the PLL's output clock correctly converges to the frequency of 400 MHz, which corresponds to the input 300 MHz multiplied by the division ratio 13.333. There are more test benches you can apply to the PLL model. For instance, the TB phase step test bench 
measures the PLO response to the input phase step, and the TB frequency step measures that to the input frequency step. And the TB underscore JHIST test bench measures the jitter histogram and phase noise spectrum of the PLO output clock. This X model test bench editor provides a convenient interface to manage multiple test benches written for a single model cell view. The tutorial and Glister user's guide describe it in more detail. That's it. In summary, Glister and a rich set of X model primitives make it easy to compose system variable models for analog mixed signal circuits, all within the Cadence Virtuoso environment. For more information on X model and Glister, please visit us at www.scientificanalog.com.